ain't gonna lie, me too. When I went on her page and seen her pictures, I said, oh, jump, jump scare. <laughs> hey there, my beautiful babies. I miss you all so much and I apologize for disappearing for who knows how long. There were a lot of things that had happened within the past year or so, and it was my absolute lowest point in my life, and I genuinely didn't feel like doing anything that I loved doing. And now, despite the fact that I'm still as busy as ever because I'll be off to university next year, I've finally found the inspiration to do what I used to love to do and to love the characters and shows that helped shape who I am in this channel right now. I'll be making a separate video explaining what happened and going into further details, but for now, let's cut the emotional reunion and get right on with the video. I hope that I can be more consistent in uploading since, now, I have a lot of new ideas and newfound inspiration to post, regardless of my packed schedule. Thank you, guys, for genuinely sticking around, even if I was gone. You all are truly a blessing to me, and I love you guys so much. Iwa. Oikawa rushes towards Iwazumi, a terrified expression on his face as sweat drips down the side of his face. Iwazumi looks to the side, his arms and hands occupied with volleyball balls to clean up from their recent practice, to see Oikawa running towards him, with no intention of ever stopping. Bemused, Iwazumi was about to ask Oikawa what was wrong or why he was running, until Oikawa tripped on his foot, twisting it a little in the process. Out of reflex, Iwazumi immediately drops the volleyballs he was carrying and swiftly swoops Oikawa into his arms, carrying him bridal style. Oikawa had a grimace on his face, holding his right foot and squeezing it to ease the pain. Iwazumi's heart beats faster at the sudden adrenaline. With a shaky huff, he glances down at Oikawa. Hey, hey, are you okay? What happened? Why were you running? Are you in trouble? Suddenly, three girls bolted towards the inside of the gym doors, a furious look on their faces and chocolates in their hands, as if on cue. The rest of the team glances at Oikawa with worry, then instinctively tried to go over to the girls to calm them down. The three girls stomped towards Oikawa, who was still being carried bridal style by Iwazumi, with Iwazumi taking a step back to put some distance between them. He knows that regardless of Oikawa having his regular fan girls, some were batshit crazy and would stop at nothing to give Oikawa chocolates or whatever else they could. He has listened to Oikawa ranting multiple times about how some of his fans were so hell-bent on asking him on a date, but not once has Iwazumi seen any of his fangirls look this infuriated. The girl who was the shortest of the three took a step closer and crossed her arms, stubbornly staying at her spot. Oikawa Toru. Oikawa nervously chuckles, scratching the back of his neck. Iwazumi notices his discomfort as he shifts unconsciously in the embrace. Hey. What's up? The girl squints her eyes at him. So? Um, so what? The girl groans. So? Who are you going to date among us three? Oikawa gritted his teeth in annoyance, but faked a smile anyway, his eyes and lips closed up tightly. Look, I can't date either of you three. The girls groaned. The one on the right places a hand on her hip. Why not? Aren't you, like, single? Horizontal ellipsis. Oikawa-san. We gave you chocolates every day, helped you with your homework, cheered you on whenever you practiced, and so on. The third girl took an even longer step forward, with Iwazumi unconsciously taking a step back. Iwazumi breathes out an inward, exhausted sigh. As dumb as Oikawa is, in Iwazumi's eyes, he doesn't need any help with homework or any of those things. He knows Oikawa is too oblivious, but he's more certain that he's mostly ignoring his fangirls, despite his fans constantly pleading with him to date them, or even be their boyfriend. Even more so, Oikawa somehow always gets into trouble, and it's all because he's trying to avoid his hardcore fangirls as much as possible. I mean, who could blame him? As usual, Iwazumi comes to the rescue. Rescuing him from his fans and, most likely, from himself. Ladies, please. I do appreciate your ever so adorable efforts, but I have to decline. I'm sorry, but I really can't date either of you. Oikawa shuffles awkwardly again, noticing how the girl tried to reach for his arm. 
Aizumi noticed that he was uncomfortable in the embrace and immediately put him down while supporting him with his shoulders, noticing how he didn't want to touch his right foot to the ground. Fangirl number one still stubbornly stood still, looking at Oikoa, then back at Iwazumi, nibbling on her bottom lip. So, what? Is that it? Was our so-called relationship all for nothing? Fangirl number two glared at her. Since when were you ever his? He's mine. They started arguing with each other, debating whether they were in a so-called relationship with him or not. This was so exhausting to listen, and even the team just let them be with how dramatic these girls could get. Iwazumi caught Yahaba and Watari snickering at the whole situation in his peripheral vision, and, once again, sighed deeply. How did asking him to be theirs even come about? On the other hand, Oikawa's eyes widened in confusion, unsure when he had been in a relationship other than with his ex. Oikawa clears his throat. I can't be with you because... Well... The girls, eager to know what Oikawa wanted to say, huddled even closer. I can't date you guys because... I'm already in a relationship. There was a pin drop silence. The ball Hanamaki was holding fell to the ground with a loud thud, everyone's jaw was practically on the ground. Iwazumi raises his brows in surprise, who knew he'd finally get his act together and date his ex again. Iwazumi assumes, but he somehow felt weird after hearing what Oikawa had said. What was that weird feeling? As if fangirl number one's screeching wasn't enough to make everyone's ears bleed, she started shaking his arm, tears welling up in the eyes of the three girls. I don't believe you. I refuse to believe you do. It's a lie. I can definitely tell. Thinking about it, Iwazumi noticed that Oikawa seems like he's lying. They tell each other everything, and it's just unusual for him not to. Or maybe he was actually telling the truth. He had yet to find out. Oikawa shifts uncomfortably. I'm not. The girls huffed. What are they, horses? Prove it, then. Oikawa gives out an agitated huff, chuckling nervously. Fine, then. In the blink of an eye, he turns around to face Iwazumi, turning his back to the girls, his right hand sliding down on his back as he places a finger on Iwazumi's chin. He moves closer to him, his lips softly brushing against his. His eyes slowly trail down to his lips, then back towards Iwazumi's wide ones. Oikawa's breath fanned Iwazumi's lips as he breathed out an airy chuckle. He moves to the side and whispers in Iwazumi's ear. I'm sorry, Iwa. May I? Iwazumi found himself nodding slowly, not knowing what he was up to. His heart began to race, and his breath hitched, as ragged as ever. Before Iwazumi could reply, Oikawa suddenly pressed his lips against Iwazumi's, shocking everyone in the gym. Oikawa's lips felt soft against his own. For some reason, Iwazumi couldn't move. He felt trapped in a spell that had been cast on him. Iwazumi felt like putty in Oikawa's embrace. He then finds himself breathless as his eyes flutter shut. A few beats later, Oikawa pulls his lips away from his best friend, his eyes hazy as he stares down at Iwazumi's. He clears his throat, then glances at the three girls, who stayed dead silent, none of them dared to say a word. Now, do you believe me? I have a boyfriend, and I'm sure if you had a lover, you wouldn't want to see them pinning hopelessly against them after so many rejections. The girls were utterly speechless, which made Oikawa internally panic. Did they believe him? They must. Girl number three then took a step back, but her eyes were fierce and filled with many visible doubts, skeptical of the fact that Oikawa is already in a relationship. Hmm, fine. See you later, Oikawa-san. The third fan girl then stomped away, dragging the two other girls by their arms and whining. Iwazumi was still dumbfounded, not exactly processing what had happened. His face was red, but not with his usual fuming expression. Matsukawa lowly whistles, Hanamaki had a smirk on his face as he placed his elbow on top of Matsukawa's shoulders. Oikawa then held his right foot on his palms, massaging it and murmuring about how he needed to put ice on it. Iwazumi broke out of his trance and glanced down at Oikawa's foot, then back at Oikawa's grimace-like face. Let's go to the clinic. Oikawa glances at Iwazumi, his face a bit flushed. He looked away and then nodded reluctantly. 
He then looks around to see the second and first years looking at them with shock, also not exactly comprehending what had happened. He softly touched his lips with his index finger as they exited the gym and made their way to the clinic. He shakes that tingling feeling off then starts limping towards the clinic, hoping that whatever he felt will soon disappear. After propping a pack of ice on Oikawa's sprained foot, the nurse excuses herself and says she will be right back, leaving the two boys alone. There was an awkward silence between the two, Oikawa occasionally hissed every time he pressed the ice on his foot. As Iwazumi started tapping his foot restlessly on the ground, he finally took everything that had happened in, his monotone expression turning sour the moment he closed his eyes and remembered his lips against Oikawa's. He then stomps over to Oikawa, who was humming something familiar under his breath. Oikawa looks up, then flinches when he sees Iwazumi's murderous eyes that stare daggers at him. Then, in the blink of an eye, Iwazumi grabs him by the collar of his jersey and brings him close to him, his mouth tugged down in a nasty scowl, his ears fuming with anger. Oikawa. Oikawa gulped, chuckling nervously as he patted his hand on his shoulder, visible sweat trickling down from the side of his face. Iwa-chan. Iwazumi glared at him. What. The. Hell. Was. That. Oikawa chuckles slowly, alarmed at the fact that Iwazumi was so calm in the way he slowly said each word. Although the vein on his forehead was popping and his fuming expression scared him to bits. Oikawa gulps. He breathed in, then started waving his arms in the air as he spoke in a fast tone. I'm sorry. They weren't leaving me alone even after I declined, and I felt uncomfortable, so I figured that I should go and find out that suddenly I should go and find you, and then suddenly I didn't know what I was thinking when I kissed you. I'm so sorry. Calm down, you idiot. I can't make out what you're trying to say. Iwazumi gave him the most expressive face he could ever muster, making Oikawa screech. Oikawa controlled his breathing, then whined. He frantically shook his arms in the air, terrified at Iwazumi's outburst. I can't. Your face is scary. Iwazumi gritted his teeth, annoyed. Fine, fine. I panicked, and I did it without thinking. Iwazumi shook him by his jersey frantically. Boke. You didn't even ask permission. Yes, I did. You even nodded. Iwazumi stopped shaking him and then glared at him sharply, his gaze as sharp as a tip of a knife. I didn't think you would kiss me. Especially with the whole team around. That also doesn't count. Oikawa huffs frustratedly. Technically, it does. Iwazumi clicks the roof of his mouth, lets go of Oikawa's jersey, and falls back onto the bed. He rubs his temple as he reminisces about the events that had happened a couple of minutes ago. All right, fine, I'm sorry. I know it was wrong to do it all of a sudden, but they just don't know when to stop, even after I tell them no. Iwazumi could see how uncomfortable he was, scratching his arms slightly with the tips of his fingernails. That had been a bad habit of his since they were children. He crossed his arms, leaning his back on the wall, which was only a few feet away from the bed. He wanted to say something in response to that, but he was too pissed off to console him. Iwazumi was about to reply until they heard the door burst open. As the clicking of heels suddenly drew closer to them, the curtain that divides the beds and the desk suddenly rattled open to the side. At first, they thought it was the nurse until they saw a brunette-haired girl strutting her way towards Oikawa, her presence making the whole atmosphere feel dense in the tiny clinic. It was fangirl number three, the one who was smarter than the two others. Assumably. Iwazumi could sense Oikawa's body tensing annoyed at the fact that she wouldn't leave him alone. Although that was the case, he still had his friendly smile plastered on his face. Even a toddler could tell that the smile was fake. The girl strutted towards the bed he was sitting on, and stopped at arm's length in front of him. She crossed her arms as a knowing smirk was plastered on her face. Oikawa-san. I have a proposal. As she ever so excitedly proclaimed, Iwazumi had to control his temper. Her voice was absolutely annoying. Oikawa grimaced. Excuse me, but I don't think I'd want to get married right now. Iwazumi threw a crumpled tissue at his forehead from a nearby desk. Dumbus, she didn't mean she wanted to get married. The other proposal. Oikawa's mouth formed into a small O. He awkwardly rubbed his neck. Oh. Iwazumi tried not to grin at Oikawa's stupidity. Was that crumpled tissue clean? Iwazumi quietly snorted when he imagined another student using it to blow their stuffy nose. 
What's even funnier is that it'll be a whole 50-50, which makes it more exciting. But that small entertainment quickly disappeared when he realized that he, himself, had also grabbed it with his whole palm. What an entry. The two, on the other hand, engaged in a staring contest, Oikawa was unusually serious, as he quickly grabbed an alcohol nearby, attempting not to reveal that embarrassing moment. Um, alright then. Let's hear it. The girl had a satisfied smirk on her face as she lazily placed a hand on her hip, leaning to the side as she placed all the weight on one side of her leg. You see, I have a hunch that you and Iwazumi-san aren't actually together. Oikawa was about to reply until the girl raised her hand. Oikawa kept his mouth shut and tried not to glare at her. Iwazumi wanted this day to end. Fast. I honestly don't think that you and Iwazumi-san are dating. I have this weird gut feeling that you're lying. Oikawa inwardly groans, not noticeably, though. Iwazumi knows that Oikawa is absolutely done with this girl. He tries not to snort. Serves him right. She then stood straight, but her hands were still firmly pressed against her hip. You have to prove it to us that you're in a relationship with him, convince us, and we'll respect your decision and leave you alone. Iwazumi choked on his own saliva. This chick is crazy. Why can't they just, leave him alone? Why does she have to go all Einstein and go all out just to do the bare minimum and leave his best friend alone? Why can't she just accept that Oikawa is too self-absorbed and obsessed with volleyball to consider getting back into a relationship? And most of all, why is he getting so worked up over it? He brushes that thought away and looks at Oikawa, giving him a look and signaling him not to do it. Oikawa sighs in defeat. Give us two weeks. It will take two weeks to convince the three of you. I can promise you that. Iwazumi tried not to scream profanities at him. What was this idiot even thinking? Iwazumi has had enough of his impulsive stupidity. Fangirl 3 nodded and took a step back. All right, then. See you later, Oikawa-san. There was something about the way she looked at him that screamed that there was something more than just a little convincing. Her eyes weren't gleaming with curiosity. It was something else. They were soft, and it looked like they held many secrets that were yet to unfold. Even so, she quickly covered it to return to their usual gaze as Iwazumi accidentally hit his elbow on the table. Oikawa didn't notice it, but Iwazumi saw it as clear as day. What really is her deal? The girl gave him one last look, then looked over at Iwazumi, looking at him up and down, before taking her leave. All that was left was silence. That was, until Iwazumi screamed at Oikawa. Oikawa covers his ears, wincing. Iwa. What are you, a seagull? A banshee? Jeez, Iwa-chan. Iwazumi grabs him by the collar of his jersey and starts shaking him once again, his grip is firm. What the hell were you thinking, agreeing with such a request? Oikawa chuckles nervously, patting him on the head. I wasn't. Iwazumi gave him a spine-chilling glare. Oikawa yelps. I'm sorry. I'm too hot to die this early. Spare me. Iwazumi shook him once more, almost vigorously. Oikawa could feel his eyes beginning to roll back to the back of his head. You're such an idiot. Iwazumi breathes in, then breathes out, his eyes flaring at Oikawa's guilty expression, his index fingers pointing at one another as he whistles and pretends to be fascinated by the ceiling. He has had enough. You're an idiot, Oikawa Toru. What the hell were you thinking? Have you gone mad? Do you not understand how stupid that was? And how unprofessional of you to do that with the entire team watching us? What if the teacher saw us? What if? Iwazumi trails off, but his expression remains the same, finally getting everything off of his chest. Oikawa winced, then sighed in exasperation. Could you, like, stop screaming next to my ear? Oh, god, I think I'm going to bath. Iwazumi stops shaking a nauseated looking Oikawa and lets go of his grip against his jersey, earning a grunt from his best friend after his back hits the wall a sigh of relief leaving his lips. I'm done. You're on your own on this one. Iwazumi was about to walk out of the clinic until he felt a pair of slender fingers, successfully stopping him in his tracks. He turns to look at a pouting Oikawa, his warm hand still wrapped around his biceps. Iwa. Don't go. Iwazumi rolls his eyes at Oikawa's whining. He shakes his arm off and turns around to face him completely, crossing his arms. You're absolutely hot, I know. Goodbye. I'm sorry come back. Iwazumi sighs in exasperation. 
Look, you brought this upon yourself. You deal with it on your own. Oikawa sighs. Please, Iwa Chan. Let's pretend that we're dating, just for a few weeks. Iwazumi squints his eyes at him, mentally face palming himself at Oikawa's stupidity. Maybe a week more or so? Iwazumi gave him the look, but Oikawa stayed unfazed. He'd probably gotten used to it by now, given how many Iwazumi gave him in an hour. Ah, uh, no? Why in the hell would I do that? Oikawa cries as if he were in deep agony. Please, take that as if I'm. Platonic Ellie, yours. There won't be any strings attached, like, at all. Absolutely not. Oikawa hugs him by the waist, leaving the spiky head boy dumbfounded at the sudden affection. He snarled, then tried removing Oikawa's arms from around his torso. What was that all of a sudden? Please, Iwa. I swear it's just two weeks. Two weeks to convince them that I can't date them. I don't even want to date them, no offense. Then tell them. If it were that easy, I would have written a song stating that my heart is completely devoted to someone who isn't them. Iwazumi rolled his eyes. Volleyball, definitely. Who and what else could it be? Oikawa lets go, then removes the melted bag of ice from his now quickly healed foot and crosses his legs. Look, you're my best friend and all, but I'm not playing along with this stupid little lie of yours. How about a deal? Iwazumi hums, his face bored, as Oikawa gives him his signature puppy dog eyes. I'll, stop calling you Iwa-chan and stop bugging you to buy me milk bread every Friday. I'll use my own money this time. Not bad, Iwazumi thought to himself. And, I'll stop bugging you in the middle of the night, and I promise I'll stop dragging you along to do my crazy antics. I'll be serious when I teach the juniors this time, I swear. Iwazumi felt his heart stop. He can't quite pinpoint why, so he ended up agreeing to his proposal. Regardless, he shook that newfound feeling of his and quickly pondered that proposal. Oikawa's face looked uncharacteristically serious as he spoke. Iwazumi ponders what would have happened tomorrow or after everything is over. He wasn't looking forward to it at all. He finally came to a decision later on. Fine. It would just be a silly little game, right? It wouldn't hurt to agree on this stupid idea, right? It'll just be two weeks, no biggie. Oikawa didn't appear to be any happier when Iwazumi reluctantly agreed, but he did have a small smile of relief knowing that Iwazumi had agreed to be his fake boyfriend. Oikawa quickly composed himself and grinned. Oh, and one more thing. I'm taking my hoodie back. Oikawa gave him a look as if he saw a ghost. What? No way. You gave it to me a few years ago. I didn't, you idiot. I'll let you borrow it temporarily. You let me borrow it for a lifetime. Iwazumi raises an eyebrow at him, giving him a look that says do it, or I'm cutting the deal. A couple of frustrated noises later, Oikawa finally agreed with a nod and gave out a deep sigh. But, I still get to call you Iwa-chan for now. Iwazumi rolls his eyes. Nothing would really change between them regardless, so this could just be a harmless little lie after all. Crap Oikawa. It's not like I could stop you if I told you not to. Oikawa grins. You know me so well, babe. Iwazumi grimaces at the pet name. Do we really need to have these stupid pet names? Do you want me to call you princess instead? Are you stupid? Of course not. Exactly. Now shut up and let's go back to the gym and practice, babe. Iwazumi threw a pillow at Oikawa's forehead, earning another wine from him. All right, baby, let's go to practice. He mocks, but Oikawa grinned from ear to ear in response. He was definitely enjoying it. Somehow, calling him that made Iwazumi's heart skip a beat once more, which was probably because of how annoyed he was with the whole arrangement. Oikawa grabs his arm, his fingers lingering as he slowly creeps his way to intertwine his hand with his. His heart began to race as he noticed how perfectly their hands fit together. Iwazumi clears his throat, composing himself. What the hell do you think you're doing? Proving to the team that you're dating a hot boyfriend. He tries to pry his hands off of his. This is really unnecessary. Oh, come on. We need to do this to be more convincing. What kind of couple doesn't hold hands? Iwazumi successfully rips their linked hands together with force as Oikora whines. Us. We're that one couple that doesn't do those lovey-dovey acts. You're no fun, Iwa-chan. Do remember that this is all just pretend. You better do your end of the deal once this is all over. 
Oikawa groaned exasperatedly and raised both of his hands in the air. Then that wouldn't be believable, now, would it? Even if it's just pretend. Well... Iwazumi was cut off by the school's nurse, who looked furious as she glanced at the two boys, whose eyes bulge wide when the door suddenly bursts open with a loud bang. Let's just say that the nurse had many complaints from teachers who were teaching in the classroom and had to apologize profusely. The two were then kicked out of the clinic, with Iwazumi carrying Oikawa on his back, much to his protest, frightened at the nurse's temper as they zoomed out of the school's corridors, and straight to the school's gates. Iwazumi carefully sat Oikawa on a nearby bench, and sat beside him, breathing in and out like his life depended on it, which, ironically, it does. Oikawa slowly whistled and looked at his boyfriend up and down, there were beads of sweat dripping down his forehead while his jersey was soaked. Jeez, Iwa-chan. You should join the track and field team with that level of speed. Iwazumi ignored him. Oikawa covers his nose exaggeratedly. And you, you stink, babe. Iwazumi finally snapped and gave Oikawa the most vicious glare he could muster. Oikawa just gave him an innocent smile, loving the fact that he was able to get the reaction he wanted to see. For no reason, really. Iwazumi was about to go off at him when suddenly Oikawa stood up and started stretching his legs, surprising him. Oh, and my foot is all right now. Well, it was already fine when the brunette just left. I just wanted to be carried, that was all. That really pushed all of Iwazumi's buttons. That piece of garbage and Oikawa. He was about to pounce on him until Oikawa bolted out from his seat and ran away, laughing like a maniac. He wanted to run after him, but he felt his legs turn jelly. So he decided to flop back down on the bench, but, clearly, he was annoyed at his best friend. He was about to take his jersey off of him from how sweaty he was all over until his phone vibrated a couple of times. There was a bunch of missed messages from a group chat he was in, Hanamaki, and a recent one, Oikawa's. He decided to open Oikawa's message first and rolled his eyes when he read the text. Thanks for the ride, honey poo. Face blowing a kiss. Can't wait for tomorrow. XOXO, your hot and sexy boyfriend. Kisses. At this point, Iwazumi wanted to throw his phone down the empty road. This has probably got to be one of the worst decisions he's ever made. They have always pushed each other's buttons, even when they were just kids. With that, he knew exactly what to do the next day. It's payback time, Oikawa Toru. Nayama Tsugi